come help me rule the universe. The only thing you won't film is the toilet. That does it. Prepare to meet my doom. Three more helmet boys. Oh yeah! What's up everybody? I'm back at it! And on today's video, we're talking about a show that aired way back in 2001, Lloyd in Space. Now you might be asking, what the heck is Lloyd in Space? Now Lloyd in Space was an American animated television series created by, now I know I'm going to butcher these names, but I'm going to give it a try. Created by Joe and Sullivan and Paul Dramain who were also the creators of another show that premiered just four years earlier and the name of that show was a little something called Recess. We all know about how great Recess turned out. Now the show Lloyd in Space premiered in 2001 back on the ABC Saturday morning block along with shows like The Weekenders, Kim Possible, The Legend of Tarzan, Disney's Recess, and House of Mouse, just to name a few. Oh, that's cool. Now the show's premise takes place far, far in the future, shortly after the end of World War IX. So yeah, even over all that alien tech and advances they have in the future, war wars are still going on because they can't get their shit fixed. You got Lloyd Nebulon, who is a green-skinned alien of the Verdetta Grain race with pointy ears and a single antenna sticking out of his head like some kind of snork. But yeah, we all know about those people. Hey, remember the snorks? Oh, I'm having a really great time. Me too. I really value our friendship. You're not like those other snorks who only want one thing. Oh, that was clumsy. <laughs> Hang on a second. Oh, gee, Lloyd. You blew up my ship. There is no Lloyd. I'm Captain Drucklax, commander of the fastest ship in the galaxy, and nothing can stop me. Nothing! Lloyd, what are you doing? Uh, nothing, Mom. It doesn't look like nothing. It looks like you're playing with those remote control spaceships again. What remote control spaceships? <laughs> Lloyd is your typical laid-back teenage student. He just loves hanging out with his friends, playing pranks from time to time, and just trying to figure out girls and kick it back, relaxing, and eating some pizza. Now, Lloyd lives in the Intrepidville Space Station, along with his telekinetic and telepathic sister, Francine, who is usually always trying to get Lloyd in trouble by snitching on his ass or finding a way to foil his plans. She's in most episodes being really annoying and just doing whatever she can to annoy the hell out of Lloyd and get him into trouble. Yeah, like most younger sisters tend to do. Turn it back to Daisy Droids, Lloyd. Turn it back or I'll blow up the TV. When she's not abusing her powers or with her friends, she's enjoying watching her favorite TV show, The Daisy Droid Girls, which is a parody of the Powerpuff Girls, if you couldn't tell. He also stays with his mother, Nora, who is like this super high-ranked space captain of the show and the head of the Intrepidville Space Department. She's pretty level-head and fair in most episodes, but she can get very angry when Lloyd messes is up or does something that's really stupid and terrible. Nor lead Nebulon, your reputation precedes you. However, you have but one tiny ship. I have many big ones. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't order them to destroy you. Because if you so much as power up your weapons or lock your systems onto either my ship or the one behind me, I'll flood my engines with quantum plutrino particles. Well, that could cause an explosion so huge it would take out this entire quadrant. You wouldn't dare. Try me. Yeah! Lloyd has three main friends, and their names are Douglas, Kurt, and Eddie. Now his friend Douglas McNoggin, who is a brain with glasses, who is a very intelligent and most need to be the smartest in the whole damn show. Leave it to Douglas to improve our lives with technology. He's your typical smart friend of the group, who uses big ass words from time to time, but oddly enough, he is not that annoying of a character. When there's an episode that deals with a lot of technology involved, or an episode where the gang must create some crazy invention or contraption, it's usually Douglas to the rescue that's gonna make things happen. Not, not. Who are you? Oh, you're supposed to say, who's there? Now second in the group of Lloyd's main friends, you got Kurt Blobberts, who is this enormous purple blob with a single eyeball. He comes from a species known as the Blue Balons. Kurt is usually pretty nice and laid back, always doing what he can to help out his friends. 
He doesn't really like to start conflict or problems, but if you mess with his friends, he will beat your ass. His species is pretty unique, being, as you learn in the episode Camp Out on Zoltan 3, that Kurt species get smaller as they age. Now the last of the three friends you got, Eddie, who is this red-haired human being who is just full of enthusiasm telling things like it is. If you're feeling shitty or looking crappy, hey, he's going to tell you about it. No one thinks I'm cool, and I'm sure I acted plenty cool my first day. <laughs> Don't you even remember your first day at school? Not really. Well, I remember it perfectly because it was so hilarious. Now, he usually just straight up be pretty blunt about whatever he's talking about. He doesn't like to beat around the bush. Whatever a problem ensues, hey, he's gonna jump into it and do whatever he can to try to fix the problem. He's probably my favorite character out of the whole show due to him just being so sarcastic and making a lot of witty remarks from time to time. Just always being life of the party. Hey, and if someone's trying to get in his way of having his fun, hey, he ain't backing down to him. I'm a, I'm a fucking Completely safe. Should be safe. But somehow I figure you ain't. Rodney! If it ain't the big blue dumb guy and his pal, Lil Lumpy. Speaking of characters who might get in the way, there's also the school bully Rodney. He looks like a fucking Pikachu. Pika Pika! A bully and he picks on other nerds. And he walks around reminding everybody that Pikachu is a really relevant Pokemon. Yeah. There are just so many other characters in the show to name. I don't really feel like going over all of them. But here are just a few of the characters that are noteworthy from the series as a whole. You have Brittany Bovalak, who is Lloyd's love interest of the show. She is a rich, six-armed, Tuscanian, who made these words? Tuscanian girl with the, who is the captain of the cheerleading squad. She is also revealed later in the series to have a secret crush on Lloyd. Although she secretly likes Lloyd, she publicly reminds him and refers to him as a dork, giving the impression that he isn't worthy of her time. You have Lloyd's teacher, Mrs. Barbara Bolt, the main teacher of all her main characters at Luna Vista Middle School. She is mostly mildly cranky robot who gets very uptight with Lloyd and the other students aren't taking things serious and goofing around. One of the characters that I've always really liked and really wish got more screen time would be the station's mechanic, Boomer. This laid back, chill, orange alien dude who just wants to lay back, read comics, and enjoy life for its simpler things. In the episode Boomer's Secret Life, we learned that Boomer is in fact a prince, which is really cool, but he declines this lifestyle because he prefers the life of just being a regular guy. Just a guy? Now, since the creators of Lloyd Space, Joe and Sullivan and Paul Germain were also the creators of Disney's Recess. It seemed that they really enjoyed working alongside many of the voice actors that they had voice in Recess. If you have seen Disney's Recess, Lloyd's voice might sound pretty familiar to you. Hey, can you guess who he is? Oh man, I created a monster. Oh man. Here are a few more characters that are voiced by Recess voice actors, as well as some more interesting things that I found out. Now it's friend Eddie being voiced by Justin Moreau, Shin Kuro, who might be most known as the voice of Gelman from Recess or Harold Berman from the show Hey Arnold. He's just always playing some kind of right in your face kind of character. Yeah, right. Then they'd call us stupid and dumb. You got Douglas McNoggin, who is voiced by Pamela Hayden, who also voices Steve and Lance the Pants from Recess, with her most known role being Millhouse from The Simpsons. Hey, but she also did those memorable seal voices from Sparrow 3, Year to Dragon. While I was gone, my friend borrowed the Rhinox submarine. You got Lloyd's mom, Nora. She's voiced by April Windchill, who did the voice of Mrs. Finster from Recess and also provided the voice of Sylvia from the show Wander Over Yonder. Oh, everywhere we go, he's conquering planets, taking over towns, and just being a flarf, narveling, no fun having jerk. Oh, Ooh, this guy makes me so mad. I just want to go to his booty little face and... Ah! Ah! Now, Kurt Bloberts is a character's voice that you will instantly think to yourself, wow, he sounds pretty familiar. That's because Kurt is voiced by Bill Fagerbake, who is the voice of Patrick Starr from SpongeBob SquarePants. Guys, this is Lloyd. He's cool. Oh, I didn't know you guys were all hanging out together. They like Kurtless. They think we're, um, what? The bug. See? You got Brickney, Lloyd's love interest. She is voiced by <laughs> Ashley A's voice actor from Recess. <laughs> Surprised, I'm hypnotized. Cause when you looked deep 
I think that's enough. We're gonna stop right now. Okay. There's also their home's IT unit named Station. That is this robotic central intelligence of the station with this foreign British accent. And he's usually a pretty helpful robot, always trying to give Lloyd advice whenever Lloyd has a problem. Now their unit station is voiced by Brian George, who also does the voice of Duff Killigan, that golf villain from Kim Possible, which I found was kind of neat. If I could talk about Eddie's dad for just a little bit right now, that dude is a pretty cool laid back dad. Being a cop for the Intrepidville space station, having to worry about all that crime and stuff, but he still takes the time to check with his son and ask him about his day. You have a really cool dad, and that's all I'm gonna say. I ain't jealous. I ain't crying. Well, that, that dude's cool. Whatever. Why don't you boys run along and have some fun? I'll see you back home later. That's all I'm gonna say. I ain't jealous. You lucky bitch. Chase, a magic adventure somewhere. Now that's enough about the characters and who voiced who. Let's get into the animation and the reception this show had as a whole. Now the show was animated and produced by Plus One Animation. And I found out there's some pretty noticeable quality shows for networks such as MTV, Disney, Cartoon Network, and even CBS. Standout shows like Daria, Beavis and Butthead, Recess, oh and what's this? Street Sharks, somebody play that theme song. But Lloyd in Space was a pretty diverse show, covering many impactful topics like gender acceptance, adolescence, running away, crime, kidnapping, commitment in relationships, family loss, betrayal, just lots of things that people could really learn from and it would go through in life. Ah, a winning combination. I'm a fucking man. All in all, Lloyd in Space was a really cool and enjoyable show that I would highly recommend checking out. The show went on for a total of 40 episodes, with four seasons being made. Now, it had a pretty nice run, and it kind of flew under the radar. Wow, that's just... But going back and checking out the show, I could really say it was a really enjoyable show. And the jokes in it are very nicely written. Do you live in a house or a giant apple? Thank you, that's more than enough questions. Now if you'll follow me, we'll head around to the other side of the wormhole to see the other side of the wormhole. No running or horseplay. We don't want anyone to get sucked into a movie. And it really is done well, and it seems really genuine, and it does have that strong recess vibe, but that show was so good, who gives a damn? These creators really knew what they were doing, and they made the dialogue really fit the story they were going for. The show is like mixing together recess with Futurama, so if that sounds like a recipe for success, well I guess it's time to watch yourself some Lloyd in Space. That's all I gotta say about the show for now, so until next time, stay awesome and take care. Corey out! Peace!